Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do. It's gonna be a little bit different and it's why we are in a different location different location. Today's video is going to be all about the best books that I've read so far in 2022. So I'm going to be going through all of the books that I gave a five-star review to on my blog, which is chickletplus.com. If you are new here, welcome. My name is Samantha and I actually started in social media back in 2009 as a blogger. I launched my blog, Chicklet Plus. I am also a self-published author of eight and I just love the written word. And I decided to include every month where I do my makeup monthly, which is where I talk about all of the beauty products that I've been trying throughout the month and I rank them from least favorite to top favorite. At the end of that video, I do always mention my book favorites as well. And I just wanted to have a little area where I could spotlight. Because even though I am a mostly beauty focused channel now, I still love books so much and I wanted to give them a little bit of time to shine some of these five star books in the spotlight. But I've been planning to do a best of books video on my channel. And it was interesting because last month when I did my makeup monthly, I actually had eight books to talk about and I got such good feedback about the books in that video people requesting more book videos and that just warms my heart because books were what I like to call my first love I actually started on YouTube as a book channel I would love to be able to make more book content if there's anything that you think of that you would like to see from me please do let me know but for today's video I'm gonna be taking you through the best books that I've read so far this year all of these books and also my reviews on Chiclet Plus will be linked down below if there's any that you want to check out further or grab for yourself and I thought it would be fun to film in my little reading nook here this is my little egg swing that I have I like to sit out here with my dog Aries who was here with me usually like drink a smoothie or a tea and just enjoy the Las Vegas weather and read a book out here so I thought I would take you to one of my favorite reading spots I also thought about potentially filming this at a really cute coffee shop that I love which is called coffee religion I like to go there it's not super close to me but I like to go there because their coffees are so so phenomenal it's just such a calming space i love to just sit and be able to chill but i love reading i run a book club on youtube here with my memberships we do book club every other month and i just love talking about books and of course i love reading so i hope you enjoy this style of video again if you have any other recommendations for videos that you would like to see from me please do let me know and let's hop into the best books i've read this year all right so we definitely have a lot of books to get through so i will try my best to make these speed reviews but if you are newer to my channel i love to talk and and especially about things that I'm super passionate about. I can tend to talk for a while. Aries is like, yes, I know. And also, I'm not the best at looking into the sun. It's pretty overcast actually in Las Vegas today and it's only like 85 degrees right now, which is crazy. But I feel like I would love to be wearing sunglasses, but that would be a little weird for this video. So fun fact about me, I cannot really open my eyes in the sun. I don't know if it's because they're so light. I don't know if that's just like a myth. I said, I'll have all of these linked, but I do have a tab on my blog, Chicklet Plus, that says Samantha's favorites. And I always put all of my five-star books in that tab as well. If you're ever looking for book reviews and some of my favorite books to read are Chicklet. It's been always one of my favorite genres. That's kind of where the name Chicklet Plus came from. The plus also included, like I do other genres, but also because I talked about so many other things on the blog. I have always been very multifaceted being in social media. People have always told me I need to niche down and only pick one thing to talk about. And that sounds extremely boring to me. And I would not want to do this career if I can only talk to you about one thing. <laughs> so that is where the name of my blog came from. I really love chick lit, women's fiction. Uh, and then I also love thrillers and suspense. So you will definitely see that play out as we go through the favorites. I also do enjoy a good rom-com. And the first book that we're starting off with is The Paris Connection. And this is by Lorraine Brown. I like to read a little bit for my review. So I start off by saying, what a charming novel. This is Lorraine Brown's debut. And if you are looking to escape to Paris, pick this one up. So the book starts off with Hannah and her boyfriend, Simon, in a train. They're heading out to his sister's wedding. But she gets up in the middle of the night and switches seats and actually goes to a different train car. And unbeknownst to her the train actually breaks apart in the middle of the night and one train goes to Amsterdam where her boyfriend Simon is going and one goes to Paris which the train she is on. She wakes up in the morning to discover this and is completely panicked and doesn't know what to do. And she does meet a man named Leo who at first they have, you know, not the greatest of interactions. He definitely tries to help her out and they form a friendship. And it was really nice when Leo takes her around Paris for the day because that is some place that I've always wanted to go. So it was really cool to really feel like I was there. This was a great novel of really transporting me into the story, which I loved. But one thing that I really enjoyed too was the self-growth aspect to Hannah. I feel like in a lot of 
romance books or romantic comedies it's kind of like girl meets guy the end like they live happily ever after and i really appreciated that this one did not follow that and hannah really wanted to grow and do the things that she wanted to do before she made any sort of decisions about her romantic life and what was going on there and that was something that i really appreciate about this novel and it's just a fun and cute one to read if you're looking for a little escapism next up we have a 30 things i love about myself and this one is by radhika sanghaini i'm not sure i'm saying that correctly this is one that i actually chose as a book club i do have book clubs here with my memberships on youtube every other month we do have a book club meeting over zoom this was i think maybe it was our first or second book of 2022 that we read but I loved this story so much because it really is about self-love and self-growth and self-dedication and getting through the hard times and picking yourself back up and all things that I can really relate to so much. I have been through a lot in my 35 years. There's definitely been times where I wouldn't necessarily say I love myself and there's been a lot of times where I've had to rediscover what it is that I love about myself and I felt like this book was relatable on so many levels in that way. In my review I say every so often a novel comes along that moves me in such a way that I feel the need to tell everyone about it. I said this is more of an unconventional rom-com. It's more focused on falling in love with yourself than another person but we follow Nina and I absolutely loved her story and it was so interesting reading this one because I felt like so many things I could I could relate to but also that I love so much you know she gets it more into yoga and spirituality which I also did as well and she loves reading I do as well but I thought it was really beautiful to show the journey of self-discovery and really truly making a list of what it is that you love about yourself and asking the people around you um, what did they think some of your best qualities are I, I really loved the idea of that and to read this at the start of a new year i felt like it really inspired me to keep working on how i like to say living my best life and, and being my best self this book really gave me so much inspiration for that and i hope that you'll read it next i have the secret love letters of olivia moretti and this is by jennifer probst okay if there's a book set in italy i'm going to read it italy is on the top of my list for travel destinations and whenever i see something set in italy i'm like take me there take me there i'm ready so i said i could hardly ever turn down a book set in italy and when i read the synopsis of the estranged sisters coming together in memory of their late mother i knew i had to read this one so after olivia moretti passes away her three daughters get together to, you know go through her things and that sort of hard task they discover a love letter addressed to their mother from a man they have never heard about and so they decide to take this trip to italy to try to figure out more of who really was their mother who was she before she became a mother um and kind of what secrets had she been hiding before her you know ultimately too soon passing the three sisters we follow are priscilla devon and also bailey and while they aren't close they all have a lot going on in their personal lives and it was really interesting it was really interesting to read about each sister and what they're going through struggles with relationships struggle with work struggle with career and what it is they want to be when they grow up and that sort of thing and like what better place to try to figure all of this out and to form a better connection with family than to go to italy get more of a back and forth because you see from olivia when she is younger and her trips to italy and then we get the present time with the sisters trying to figure everything out i absolutely love dual past present books they're some of my favorite to read and and I loved both sides. Sometimes there's more one side that draws me to another one and this I loved both of them. It was such a beautiful story of family and love and the sacrifices that you make for love, what true love really means, um, but also family, sisterhood, uh, and, the, and those sort of bonds. And it was so beautiful. I hope you'll read this one. Next up we have a Curfew and this is by Jane Cowie. This is a book that was so fascinating let me tell you so it says that think handmaid's tale but with the women in charge set in a world where all men are electronically tagged and placed under strict curfew and the murder investigation threatening to undo it all so it says imagine a near future britain which women dominate workplaces public spaces and government the gender pay gap no longer exists and motherhood opens doors instead of clothing instead of closing them and men at a certain age have to get electronically tagged and it's a whole i mean you have to obviously do a lot of imagination to think of a world like this but i mean there's crazier things that i feel like could happen these days 
in our world okay the scary part is is they're doing this because there's always been you know historically so much violence against women so that is why these laws in this imagined world has taken place to try to protect these women to give them more opportunities instead of taking things away from them which i absolutely really enjoyed reading that aspect of it then a woman is murdered and there's so much shock because you know it's 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 usually the the men that are doing this how could a woman be murdered at night when all of these men are tied they would know who did it and so it kind of threatens everybody and it threatens everybody's safety imagining a world like this this was one of those books where i was like i need to talk to people about it we had a whole discussion one night at the apartment complex i live in we were having dinner together and i was like let me tell you about this book and we went around and we gave our discussions on it and this is one where I don't necessarily agree with everything in the book and yes I had to use my imagination quite a bit while reading but it was one of those that it was just still so thought-provoking and you have a little bit more of a suspense thriller angle to it as well and I just had to keep reading to figure out what was going to go on and what was going to happen. It was fascinating. I would give it a read. Then we have The Wedding Veil, and this is by Christy Woods and Harvey. Christy Woods and Harvey is a favorite author of mine. She's appeared on my favorites list many times. I have interviewed her for my podcast. I do run the Start Inspired podcast. I haven't posted it since I moved to Las Vegas. I got divorced, I moved from Iowa to Vegas, and I also launched my own brand three months after moving here. And I've really had to put a lot of focus into that. So something had to go on my back burner, but I love my podcast. You can still listen to the past episodes. I'm still hoping to bring it back when I can time manage everything a little bit better as well. But Christy is such a fabulous author. And this is another one where we get the dual past present timeline, which I love so much. And there was also a really fun aspect in here because it brings in a little bit of historical fiction. It comes to Edith the Vanderbilt. So this is, we go from 1940. 14 to present day and obviously we are following the wedding veil and julia baxter is in present day and she is getting married she's having some some qualms about it it was fascinating to read about why she was having these doubts i also loved the grandmother in this novel as well i had a special bond with my grandmother so i really loved reading about that but then adding in the historical parts i found was really fascinating there was a lot i was googling to see like what was real or what was just you know weaved in with the fiction Family ties are very important here. Um, also, women and how they are perceived, not only in modern day, but when Edith Vanderbilt was going through her own struggles. That was all so fascinating to read. And something about the way that Christy Woodson Harvey writes, she has such character-driven novels and they really bring you into the characters that you are reading about and you feel like you're right there along with them. And I love this one. Highly recommend all of her books, but The Wedding Veil was good. Then we have At Least You Have Your Health, and this is by Maddie Sinha. I loved her debut novel, The White Coat Diaries. I also gave, gave that a five-star review. And in this one, we have, once again, more on the medical drama side of things, but with a bit of an interesting twist. So I said, readers are treated to a medical drama that takes a sharp turn away from traditional medicine and into a more holistic approach. Follow Dr. Maya Rao, who's a gynecologist. She's having a lot of issues at her job. There's a lot of underlying themes to this novel here of racism and sexism even in the workplace in a medical workplace and what that looks like she decides to join on to a concierge wellness clinic it specializes in house clo house calls for its clientele of wealthy women for whom no vitamin infusion or healing crystal is too expensive they needed a gynecologist to join on and she meets this amelia through school and Amelia is kind of portrayed as the woman that like everyone wants to be you know how the term like it girl is really big like Amelia is like the it girl to everybody they want to emulate her they want to be her they want to dress like her they want to be her friend they want to be invited to her parties and so when Maya starts to form a friendship with her and then learns a little bit more about the clinic that Amelia runs decides to join on to it and then then you're really taken in for a wild ride and once again this is a book that i don't necessarily agree with absolutely everything that i read or sometimes maya's approach to women who do like something that's more either holistic or natural and just she's very firm in her ways of traditional medicine i don't personally necessarily agree with that i'm someone who i'm under the care of a naturopathic doctor right now and i was able to get much better help through any traditional doctor that i could find um so there is that sort of thing but it's still such a thought-provoking and well-written novel and it really goes into the dangers of something like vanity and when are we talking about something for medical or health reasons and when are we talking about something for 
vanity and wanting to being younger and kind of the what can be a very fine line and a very fine balance between the two and just that whole topic of discussion i found really interesting i'm someone who even if i don't necessarily agree with absolutely everything i still like my mind to be expanded i still like to have conversations with others who have different viewpoints than me because i think it's how you learn and grow and you understand the other people around you and i feel like that's kind of what this book made me take away from it next we have by any other name and this is by lauren kate so i love books about people who love books I, it's just it's just the book lover in me I guess I could say this is more of a literary rom-com and we follow Lainey who is an editor and she gets a uh, a promotion she gets this opportunity to work with a best-selling author and she is so excited about this because she, this is also a favorite author of hers and getting to work with Noah Calloway who Noah's books kind of defined Lainey's own current relationship that she is in and she's just so excited but of course there are some big twists and again you find them out pretty early on and maybe you might have an idea from the synopsis of what that twist could be and it's a rom-com so you might be able to figure it out but it's still fun when you get to kind of you know pull the thread back and see how everything plays out and see Lainey's reaction this one you definitely have more of that slow burn romance which isn't always my thing but I really loved Lainey's character and she's so optimistic about so many things and she really kind of reminded me of in that sense she's an editor I always thought that I would be an editor that was what I originally wanted to do I thought I would live in New York one day and be an editor for a magazine so I love reading about the publishing world I owned a publishing company for a while and so just seeing her job her career how everything works out her optimism about so many things and there's also a lot of very timely topics in here such as cancel culture I enjoyed Lainey's desire for honesty and transparency and she reminded me a lot of myself in that way too it's something I try to bring to all of my platforms and I just felt like I really connected with her and it was just a cute rom-com something another good escapism read next we have the no show and this is by Beth O'Leary we are getting more into the books that I did review in my last makeup monthly um, so you can check those but again I knew that I wanted to film this whole video as well but this is one where I was like tearing up as I was trying to talk about it in the last video because it was such a beautiful and very unexpectedly emotional read. When we first start, even from the looks of the cover, I'm thinking we're following this Joseph Carter and he's stringing all of these women along. And I'm like, how are they not figuring it out? How are they not seeing through him? In my review, I'm saying, where could this possibly go? Where could this possibly go? Who is actually likable out of these characters? But then you keep reading and I don't want to ruin anything for anybody. I remember staying up late one night reading this book just tears dripping off my face because again it was so unexpected in so many ways I thought I had an idea of what this book was going to be about and I was thinking maybe these like women would get kind of like revenge on this Joseph Carter it is a beautiful romantic story there's heartbreak in here there's times where you'll be very probably a little bit confused and probably a little bit frustrated and i think this is one of the hardest books that i'm trying to speak a review or even write a review about but it's just it's a must read Add it to your next up we have the treehouse on dog river road and this is by katherine drake what i really enjoyed and what i said in last uh last month's video where i talked more about books is i feel like a lot of books that i've been reading this year aren't just one-dimensional also touch on important and also timely topics like this one here kind of an underlying theme is the environment and how we have treated and the changes that it's making on the world more than that we follow hannah spencer she has left her job where she wasn't super happy with it anyways and she's back at home she's watching her sister's two children while her sister and husband travel out of the country for work i love that the book is set in vermont vermont maine that area really fascinates me i hope to get there one day so it was fun to read the setting and the book was one that kind of instantly transported me there and what i really enjoyed about this one too definitely more of your romance rom-com but everything seems kind of quite easy once the relationship between Hannah and Nathan really kicks off. I was kind of like, okay, this is all working really well. It's all going really smoothly. Where are we going with this? And then what I enjoyed was Hannah wanting to be so sure in her decisions of what she was doing, where she was living, what her career was going to be. And she wasn't going to let a relationship choose that for her. And I loved that and I want to read more books like that because, you know, I, I've mentioned that I'm divorced and I met my ex-husband at a very young age and I let love 
choose my life plan for me and not myself. I truly try not to live with regrets and you know, for the most part I had a happy marriage for a long time, but sometimes I do wonder what would have happened if I would have stood up for myself and I would have really figured out who Samantha was and what she wanted and maybe I would have gone to New York to be that book editor. Who really knows, right? But I really love reading these types of books where it shows strong, independent women putting themselves first. Not putting a man first, not even putting love first. And I love love. Not putting those first, putting yourself first. I think that's so important. Love this. The Mad Girls of New York by Maya Rodell. I just really feel like everyone should read. I know all of these books I'm saying I think everybody should read, but this is one that is based on a true story. It is a historical fiction. It says in 1887 New York, City, New York City, Nellie Bly has ambitions beyond writing for the ladies' pages. But all the editors on Newspaper Row think women are too emotional, respectable, and delicate to do her job. But then the New York world challenges her to an assignment she'd be mad to accept and mad to refuse. Go undercover as a patient at Blackwell's Island Insane Asylum for women. I started reading this book and I instantly felt horrified that I was not familiar with Nellie Bly. This made me start Googling and doing my own research onto Nellie Bly and others that really shaped what journalism looks like for females today. And again, as someone who's always been interested in that industry, I feel like it's important that I know the women who pioneered the path for us. And I get so inspired and motivated when I read about someone like Nellie Bly who wants so badly to be taken seriously in her, her, in her career that she does something like willingly goes to an insane asylum that is not known for its good treatment of patients. And then there's the whole other aspect of learning about this insane asylum, why women were sent there because their husbands wanted them to, their husbands were tired of them, they found out about their husband's mistress and was upset about it, so their husbands claim their wives are now insane. I mean, it just, when you look back on the treatment of women, it's it real difficult to not be frustrated with the way events of our time are now going and it gets to be really scary. There's a few lines in there that I shared on my Instagram stories because it was like, this just feels a little bit too close for comfort right now. And I'm reading something set in 1887. That's terrifying. Well, is so thought provoking. It had me doing so much research. I highly recommend it. I think it's educational and important to read. And if you're someone like me who loves the written word, journalism, reporting, anything like that, I think it's really fascinating to learn some more of the origin, how women were able to get into those roles of journalists, reporters, and editors. Next up we have A Chef's Kiss, and this is by TJ Alexander. It's more of the rom-com, it does fall into the LGBTQA. I like, once again, with a lot of these books that I am reading in 2022, is it covers so many more issues. Um, not only do we have a non-binary a non character in here, which I honestly think this might be the first novel I've read that has a non-binary non character as a main character. So I thought that was really great to see, but again, it touches on racism and sexism, homophobia, um, especially in the workplace. And it was very frustrating to read the treatment of people from time to time with this one. I feel like I say I love a lot of different types of books from the genres. I love reading about book lovers. I love reading about weddings. I love past present. Uh, but I also really love books about food. I'm a big foodie, so I don't know if that's what that is, but one of our main characters is Simone. She's a low-key pastry expert, and she works for a cookbook publisher in New York City. And she does meet Ray, who is new to the team, and Ray is non-binary. And Simone is bisexual, and we see them try to enter into, there's, there's a bit of a push-pull. They don't instantly get together, but you can tell there's a little bit of romantic tension between the two but how that affects the workplace, how Ray coming out as non-binary to the rest of the workplace. There's a lot packed into this novel, even though it read very quickly. Um, I finished it in just a couple of days. It never seemed too long or like drug out. I love thought-provoking books. It's another reason I love to read. And this one really has so many offerings in here. It's one I highly recommend. Take My Hand by Dolan Perkins Valdez. This was another book that I kind of teared up last month trying to talk about because I feel very frustrated when I learn about certain events that I've never learned about through my education. And this was definitely one of those. So 
This says, inspired by true events that rock the nation, a searing and compassionate new novel about a black nurse in post-segregation Alabama who blows the whistle on a terrible injustice done to her patients. This is set in 1973 and we follow Sybil Townsend who is a nurse and um, her, her main job that she does at her clinic is she gives uh, birth control to the female patient. And just a little bit from my review, I said it's an absolute must read. Um, it horrifies me that the events brought to light in this novel would, were never taught to me about school learning about the history of my country that has been shuffled and hidden away and I'm grateful to authors like Dolan Perkins Valdez who are opening eyes and ears and words because it is necessary that we are informed um, because you feel afraid of past repeating itself if we don't learn anything from it and we just push certain things aside um, not only can we not honor and respect what happened in the past but it feels very scary that something similar could happen because if people can just push it under the rug why not do it again? I really enjoyed reading Sybil's story because she's someone who wants to do good. She wants to do right. She starts her career as a nurse because she has a desire to help people. And when she meets the sisters, Erica and in India, and learns about the treatment and these young girls being sterilized without their consent, without their knowledge of even what's going on, and how federally funded clinics really took advantage of, especially black families, uh, poor families, taking advantage of the fact that not parents were not even able to read, they were not even able to understand what their children were going to be put through. It's absolutely heart-wrenching, um, but it was, I mean, I, I wanna say the word like riveting. That makes me so sad because it is based on true events, but this is just one I, highly recommend everybody reads right away and we have guilt by jamie brenner and this is just a fun one it involves a family who uh is very well known in the jewelry jewelry industry so in this novel we have the pavlin pavlin family and in the book they are the ones who created that diamond a diamond symbolizes love a diamond symbolizes engagement something about this book the cover really drew me back to when i first started chiclet plus and i wasn't getting any books for review yet i was just going to the library and scrolling scrolling through the aisles walking through the aisles looking at all the book covers picking out ones that were pink or sparkly or it had a shoe on them or a cupcake something like this definitely would have made it like i would have gone over to a little self scanner and checked this one out on my own because the cover immediately drew me in the synopsis just the idea of this like glitzy ritzy family with all of their jewelry that's like dripping in them i was fascinated by it has all of that but also so much more get the story of the whole family there's three sisters who are the heirs to the to the pavlin fortune and the pavlin business and then we do also have one of the sisters does have a daughter who's Gemma and we get her point of view as well. So this is gonna be more of a family drama. I love that we get a lot of the different point of views and we get a lot of past versus present and we see how the family has ended up being incredibly estranged. Gemma actually has nothing to do after her mother's death, has nothing to do with her aunts, has nothing to do with her grandparents of the company. And she's trying to make her own way as her own jewelry designer. And she thinks Pavlin is very outdated and dusty and she wants to do her own thing. Um, we also get the point of view from the two remaining sisters. We get to see Gemma's mother side of things before she is tragically killed. And all along you have different themes of obviously family self-discovery a lot of different aspects of love of course all of the different talk about jewelry like i'm not that i don't even i'm not even wearing any jewelry today i don't think you can count my scrunchie as jewelry just reading about how jewelry comes to life and all of the different ways that you can create i don't i thought that was really fascinating to read but again this is a perfect beach read vacation read escapism read it's a fun one but there's a lot more to it as well my summer darlings by may cobb Ah, where, like, where does one even begin with this book? Okay, so it says, I, let me just, I'll just read from my review because that's easier for me. Addictive yet highly disturbing is how I would describe this one. So this is going to be more under your thriller suspense type novel. Set in small town Texas, we follow friends Kitty, Jen, and Cynthia. Jen's newly divorced. Kitty and Cynthia are both married with children. And then this new man moves to town, this Will, who's very sexy and mysterious and foreign so that's you know getting everyone all in a tizzy but the thing is we know from the beginning that there's a woman in the forest who's dying like we know that we know that from the beginning but we don't know who she is 
We don't know why she's there. We don't know who put her there. We don't know if she survives. So throughout the book, we get the woman in the forest and then we go back and we see how all of the events are laid out. Man, these three women, they got a lot going on. They got a lot of secrets amongst them. Because as I'm doing this video, my friends were talking in the group chat and someone put in the quote, friendship is not a competition. And that would describe this book really well because it seems like all three women even though they're friends and they've been friends for a long time they have some sort of like weird competition drive against one another and then you have will in the middle of it who i for for real like i could not figure out what it was that all three women were losing their minds over and risking certain things their reputations their marriages on this guy i wanted to shake them a few times and be like what is it that you are seeing that i am not because they are doing some wicked and wild things in here. This is a very adult book. There's a lot of very adult scenes in here. Again, I'm 35, I read adult fiction. So this one is uh, has some very steamy scenes. But the ending, like right when you think, right when you think you're like, I know who's in the forest. I know what's gonna happen. I know who put her there. I know how the friends are gonna react. Then there's such a shocking twist that I was like, I couldn't believe it. And then, you keep reading to the end and it's almost like it gives you that feeling of like it's not quite over yet and it was one of those books where i felt very uncomfortable when i closed it because i felt like i could see the characters in my mind eye in my mind's eye and i could see them just doing more and more bad things and i was like oh my gosh so it is one twisty ride but it's very addicting i had a hard time putting this one down but man prepared for some unexpected twist in here. Next we have Nora Goes Off Script and this is by Annabelle Monahan. I describe this as a complicated yet compelling novel filled with frustrating situations, likable characters, and relatable relationships but with a little dash of Hollywood. So I really loved reading Nora's story because she is a romance movie show writer. Like she sells, you know, in the book it's something different but like we have the oh i don't even know what's it called the the network where you have like the cheesy like christmas the hallmark channel is that a thing or did i just make that up i clearly don't watch a lot of movies or shows but in the book that is what she does as a career she writes these like cheesy romances but then she goes through a divorce and she ends up really writing that whole story and when she takes it to her editor her editor is like this is not one of your cheesy romance movies this has depth to it, this is a lot. And it ends up being produced into a whole Hollywood film. And I obviously can relate to so much of that. Um, I have not written, I don't know if I will necessarily write like how everything went down memoir style like she did in her book, but definitely in not my ninth novel that's coming, but in the 10th book, there's a lot of what goes on in that story that is, um, you know real to my life and real to my situation so i understand if being a creative and being a writer and really using your words to get through some of the situations sometimes writing to me is my form of therapy um so i could really relate to nora on so many levels the actor leo uh who plays her ex-husband in the film they start to really fall for each other and i thought that was really interesting you know she's now a single mom of two kids her ex-husband really has nothing to do with the kids anymore and she starts to fall for this you know hollywood heartthrob this hunk that everybody loves and how can they make their lives work together between his filming schedule and red carpets and her being a mom and running to soccer games and making dinner and doing homework with her kids and it was really fun to see them start to form this connection and this relationship and then you know through the book we get obviously there has to be a drama involved and i was so confused and i was like no what happened here like things were going so well like i don't understand what's going on it felt like neither of the characters knew what was going on either and i was just getting more and more confused as a reader and i want it so badly for these two to be together and to be happy together and i had to know what was going on and once you realize what has happened and what made them have this rift and this fight it's like kind of comical yet really heartbreaking at the same time in my review i said you know a book is really getting to you when you feel absolutely crushed during certain scenes and then get hopeful again and again that everything will work out the way you want it to i said nora goes off script truly took me for a ride and i enjoyed every page of it i called it a perfect summer read and again it's one of those that's like on the escapism side but it just it's such a sweet treat 
I really love this one. I hope you like it too. And then the uh, final book that I have for today, this is Island Time and this is by Georgia Clark. I really enjoyed reading Georgia's debut novel as well. And again, all of these books are going to be linked down below. What's funny is about reading Island Time is I just kind of jumped into it. And with Georgia's last novel, it was based on a wedding planner who was widowed and then finds out her ex had a girlfriend and they try to run the book together and it's very romantic comedy and i was kind of thinking that would be the same i'm looking at island time i'm looking at the cover i'm like oh, okay like fun laid back chill read about people on the island falling in love like let's do it i very quickly was like oh gosh this is not what i was expecting because once again you have more layers to the story and one really being the environment and climate change and you start off with a natural disaster and people being um, sequestered on an island off of Australia because of a natural disaster has knocked everything out has really changed everything around them the wildlife around them the ocean the water the it, everything I was I was actually really sad reading the beginning of this book as you see things like the animals dying and just certain things like that that just like tug at my heartstrings and make me really sad but you really see the effects that something like climate change is having on our world and it's very sad and it's very scary as well but then you get into the characters and this is a very character driven novel you get a little pov from almost everybody in the novel and there's a lot going on but from my review i say this features an ensemble cast and we're treated to multiple povs while sometimes too many roles can get jumbled and it's hard to keep up with who is who and with what problems i said clark masterfully weaves each character storyline in their own unique way definitely a lot of steamy scenes so once again adult romance novel here um i said but i really loved about this book that nothing was off limits we have queer romances mental health battling inner demons parenthood the environment indigenous culture and the list goes on with this book i imagine you know what they say like a melting pot but it's kind of like what i think of like you have like a big pot and you pour all these different things in and then you stir it together and you just make one like delicious meal i don't know that's like the only way i feel like i can describe this book it was so good there was a lot to learn again there was a lot that i was googling throughout the book that i didn't know i loved uh, georgia's note at the end that really gave a nod to um where she got some of her research for the book where she got some of the ideas it's interesting reading some of these in 2022 because a lot of these books were written during the pandemic and during quarantine and so it's really fascinating to read the author's notes and again georgia being like i was in new york but i wish i was with my family in australia and knowing that i couldn't just go travel to be with them because of this and not knowing if i would see them again and how that really gave her the idea for the story i think all of that is so fascinating i love to hear where authors inspirations come come from so island time beautiful story once again i hope that you'll check it out but after that those are the best books that i've read so far in the year of 2022 if you're ever looking for book recommendations you can check out chickletplus.com like i said i do uh, feature my five star books every single month in my makeup monthly so make sure you are subscribed so you can check out for more beauty book news i like to do lifestyle videos i'm getting ready to head inside to film a fashion video i live in las vegas i love to take you around my city i'm hosting a meetup in august that information is in in my description box but i hope you enjoyed this one if you are a regular to my channel i know this is a little bit different but of course i would love to get your feedback and i just hope that you enjoyed this one you know check out some of these books everything is linked in my description box and as always if you did enjoy it please make sure to give it a thumbs up i hope you also consider subscribing before you go and i'll see you in my next video